A few weeks ago, I did a video showing how Marvel has come to dominate in movies while DC just messes around with Batman and Superman. I was accused of being biased, which I totally am and I admit to that, but just because I prefer Marvel doesn't mean I want DC to suck. They are just seemingly making very questionable decisions. It just raises too many questions. But I do like some of what they've done. So I've decided to make a video about what DC has done right. Now I'm just going to go as far back as Batman Begins because otherwise this video will get crazy long and my goal is to focus on what they've done since the superhero boom that started with X-Men. I plan to focus exclusively on what DC has done right. So anytime a gripe comes up, I'll edit it out. I'm a pretty huge fan of the whole Dark Knight series. These are three of the best superhero movies ever. Actually, I'd go a step further and call them three of the best movies ever. I'm not sure what inspired DC to have Christopher Nolan make some Batman movies, but it was a great call. The cast was all great. Superman Returns is a different story. I think Kevin Spacey plays a great Lex Luthor, and I think Brandon Routh has proven since then that he does have the chops to play both a good Superman and a good Clark Kent. However, he was saddled with a... And that brings me to a movie that I wanted to bring up during my Marvel vs. DC video, but I didn't because it won't have been an odd man out. It won't have been like bringing up Big Hero 6. It's not connected to a big universe, and it shouldn't be. This is easily one of my favorite comic book movies based on one of my favorite graphic novels, Watchmen. This is a movie that carries with it a very mixed reaction, but I thought it was great. It was as faithful to the graphic novel as time allowed, and honestly, I prefer the threat of Dr. Manhattan over some giant space squid. This movie, like 300 before it, showed Zack Snyder is capable of making great comic book movies as long as he follows the source material as closely as possible. His extreme slow-mo and flourishes can work well as long as he contains them to someone else's story. In 2011, we had Green Lantern. I'm not a huge fan of Ryan Reynolds by any sense of the word, but I thought he did a pretty good job. Marn Campbell was a good choice to direct. Heck, he successfully restarted the Bond franchise twice, so starting a comic book franchise should be right in his wheelhouse. Unfortunately... <laughs> Getting Christopher Nolan in charge of the Superman franchise was a great idea. After his great Batman trilogy, surely he would do a great job with soups. Zack Snyder was also a good call, since Nolan would be in charge of the script. The entire cast of Man of Steel was also inspired. The only major player I was disappointed with was... Overall, Man of Steel was an entertaining movie with... Then we get to the building of the DC Cinematic Universe, which will resume in a film starring Superman and Batman. It was a good idea to introduce us to a new Batman in a team-up movie since his last franchise is so fresh in our memories. Too bad the title of this movie had to be... Letting Christopher Nolan go... And they had to cast... And while Gal Gadot has the potential to be a great Wonder Woman, since she is essentially little more than an unknown, their judgment has been put in serious question with... Though I will admit Jesse Eisenberg is a good actor, and he could play a good Lex Luthor. I also thought Jeremy Irons was a great choice to play Alfred. David Ayer is a good filmmaker and has the potential to make a great Suicide Squad, especially with actors like Will Smith, Tom Hardy, and Margot Robbie in the mix. This movie could be great, even though it would be better if we first saw these... After her performance in Wolf of Wall Street, it was clear Margot Robbie could play a great Harley Quinn. And casting Jared Leto as the Joker is a stroke of genius. And while I honestly doubt he'll ever match Heath Ledger, I do think he could give us an amazing and unique Joker. But then Tom Hardy dropped out and was replaced with... And now we come to the Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice teaser. And while I like Alfred's speech to Batman... That's how it starts. The fever. The rage. The feeling of powerlessness. But turns, good men. Cruel. The rest of the trailer was... 
and they just had to release this picture of the Joker. And I kind of like the super green hair, but I look at the rest and wonder if they're just trolled. <laughs> And not long after that, we got the full picture of the Suicide Squad, and holy shit, they're introducing a lot of people in this movie. Although I will say, they all look fairly cool. Although Enchantress looks a little... I didn't like Harley Quinn's look at first, but it's kind of grown on me. Deadshot looks great, except why isn't Deadshot's gun sight and eyepiece lined? But overall, I like this picture. Unfortunately, they can release all the pictures they want. Until we see another movie from this DC Cinematic Universe, we'll never know the quality of the product. All we know is Zack Snyder can deliver visuals. That doesn't mean he can deliver a good movie. Like I said, I'm a Marvel fan over DC, but this doesn't mean I want DC to fail. In fact, I want them to succeed. Not just because I want to see some great DC movies for some of the lesser known DC characters, but also to give Marvel some competition. Force Marvel to constantly play their A game every step of the way, or lose their hold on the market. If both companies do this, then comic book fans will get so many good movies over the next few years, it will be unreal. And that would be awesome. Hey, if you like this video, please make sure to hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe. That helps me out a lot. And if you really love this video, consider visiting my Patreon page. Every video I make takes conservatively an average of one hour per minute for me to produce. And the ad revenue on these videos does not give me a very large return. So if you go to my Patreon and only want to contribute one dollar, that's just fine. That helps me out a lot. I plan on adding some new rewards, such as a DVD box sets of my videos, as well as t-shirts. If there's other rewards you'd like to see happen, please let me know. For more information, make sure to visit my Patreon page.